Okay, so this is gonna wrap it up for the Taylor Swift Folklore album, the very last track, the last great American Dynasty. Well, at least the last track that we did. Not that yeah. it's the last track on the album. We kind of skipped. Yeah, we this kind one. of uh, had our own thing going in terms of order. So let's see what she got. The last great American Dynasty. It's kind of fitting because it's like our last song from her folklore album. Oh, in terms of like the title. Yeah. Let me get this all the way up. Rebecca rode up on the afternoon train. It was sunny. Her salt box house on the coast took a mind off St. Louis. Bill was the heir to the Standard Oil name and money. And the town said, How did a middle class divorce say do it? The wedding was charming. If the little gauche. Only so far new money goes They picked out a home and called it Holiday House The parties were tasteful if a little loud The doctor had told him to settle down It must have been her fault his heart gave out mm. I wonder whose heart she's talking about So when I see the name Rebecca There were a couple of comments that um, we're saying that Rebecca was the original name for Betty. Oh, I think I've seen that comment too. Yeah. So aside from that, um, this seems like something that's taken place like way later before like the whole um, like romance thing. Before like the whole love triangle? I don't know if this is about the love triangle. This is so hard for me to kind of like look at this as like its separate song. Um, but I assume that this is like during like their adult years because they're talking about a marriage. They're talking about, you know, having their own beach house and then a middle age divorcee. Yeah. I yeah. This awesome. this instrumental is very upbeat in very comparison upbeat. to the last like two or three that we listened to. Yeah, so um, I wonder if that uh, beating up the drum in the beginning represents like kind of like life for Rebecca. Yeah, it seems very uplifting. Yeah. And then like even like the lyrics, it's very, very positive, almost like that picture perfect ending that you would imagine in a marriage. But we're still you early know what? on I don't song. really look at it as like positive, but I do find power behind Rebecca. Yeah. It must have been her fault his heart gave out. And they said, there goes the last great American dynasty. When they're referring to the last great American dynasty, I think they're talking about the marriage. I think so too. That's actually what I was thinking. There goes the last great American dynasty. Who knows if she never showed up what could have been There goes the maddest woman this town has ever seen Ooh, mad, mad woman. woman, yeah There goes the maddest woman this town has ever seen She had a marvelous time ruining everything Rebecca gave up on From the city, filled the pool with champagne and swam with the big names and blew through the money on the boys and the ballet and losing on card game bets with Dolly. And they said, There goes the last great American dynasty. Who knows if she never showed up? What could have been? When I listen to this song, I picture a very 
successful, independent woman that clearly didn't have a successful marriage. And so, like, she's at the brink of, like, the end of the relationship where she's just blowing this dude's money. It's funny. I actually see it as a very self-destructive woman in a relationship. Mm. That's how I see it. Mm. I don't see her as being, like, I don't know, like, I'm not going to put a claim on whether she's successful or unsuccessful, but I just see it as someone that's extremely self-destructive. Mm. If she never showed up, what could have been? Like, if she never showed up, what could have been? Like, I feel like she's the cause of why the dynasty went to shit. Because I feel like the way she used the lyric, you never know what it could, what, what it could have been if she never showed up. I feel like she's almost like, I don't want to call her like a virus, <laughs> but <laughs> where she's like. Huh. Oh, if she never showed up in this town? Or, or the relationship. Or maybe the town. Maybe she just attracted destruction. I don't know. So they mentioned Rhode Island. I also look at that because line. Because she also mentioned like bringing her bitch pack friends. So the way you would use that, I feel like if I was writing that, the way I would use that, like her bitch pack friends. So obviously the you're not referring to her friends as like positive or people that you'd want to be around or it's i i could also look at it differently where it's like her bitch pack friends like her friends that are the bitches so like sometimes like people have different groups of friends ones that like you party with some ones that like you know you go eat at yeah so I'm, that's another way of looking at it see for me when like if we circle back to what you said about her being successful i don't see a successful woman having a bitch pack of friends because usually people are a reflection of their circle so if if she is quote unquote successful i don't think she would have those type of friends i would think she'd be around other successful people or people that are aspired to be successful i think there's gray area with that because there's nothing wrong with having bitchy friends and i'm speaking <laughs> From, like, personal experience. Because you have a bunch of bitch pack <laughs> friends, too. Just don't fly them over, over oh, my wait, way. Oh, wait, but let me go back to that one line. So that one line where she's questioning, like, um, um, like, what if she never showed up, right? I'm also thinking about it in a sense where, like, what if she was talking about herself? What if Taylor's saying, like, what if she never showed up? What if she was never in the music industry? What would happen? I see. If you're connecting it that way, yeah, I see what you're saying. And the American dynasty being like the mu the music industry. Last great American dynasty. Who knows if she never showed up, what could have been? She's she seems <laughs> but yeah, like the the picture she's painting for me based on like based on the lyrics, the way I interpret this is that she's very like not just mad, but like destructive and then also like someone that like I don't know a good word to explain someone that kinda of causes chaos or wherever they go. So that's kind of what I get out of this. This time ruining everything. They say she was seen on occasion, facing the rock star. Showed up what could have been. There goes the loudest woman this town has ever seen. I had a marvelous time ruining everything. I had a marvelous time ruining everything. A marvelous time. 
But I also think it can it can actually be someone that's a, a nonconformist, like maybe someone that's coming into an industry that maybe stands out or it's not or is not conforming to the standards. Because like you think about someone that comes into something, it, it could be anything, but let's say someone that comes into a music industry and it's not abiding by the standard or not listening to the label and yeah. she's kind of like destroying everything. It can also mean like not really destroying something, but just not following standard protocol, like in a music industry where, where you're kind of just like going against the grain. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like another interpretation I'm starting to get for some reason. And adding on to that, like, this idea that a dynasty, when you think of dynasty, I think of like really old tradition, you know, like very packed, like families with, you know, just like very strict rules. That's what I think of when I think of dynasty. And so this song being named that and going back to what you said about someone that's like a nonconformist it almost makes sense that like it mentions the last great American dynasty where like things got to change, like something new has has like has to happen. And so for her to ruin it, it's, I don't think in like a literal sense, but I think it's more of like times of change, like laws it, being rewritten. Yeah. Cause I can, I can see it from like a, a revolutionary standpoint, mm -hmm. like someone like Taylor, especially like, she can be considered a dynasty, a franchise to any label. Mm -hmm. She can come into any label and build that label to something great into a dynasty or a franchise. So I also think she has that ability to, to destroy that if she wants to, or at least get people thinking. Yeah, because I, I mean, I didn't follow her career path to the T, but from what it sounds like, it's like what she did was very, like, um, unexpected. Yeah. You know? In like, terms of what? In terms of, like, leaving the labels and then kind of, like, going MIA. Yeah. And then coming back with, like, a completely different mindset. I mean, I don't know that much about Taylor, but from the little that I've seen, she seems like an extremely adaptive artist. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that she could jump from different genres uh, within itself is already an indication of how good she actually is. There's not a lot of artists that can successfully jump from genre to genre, and let like alone, successfully. So. Let alone like face all the shit that she faced yeah. from the social media. I like I think, that song. I think this song is like, it's about a fictional character. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of um, influence from Taylor's personal life. It, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that. I always feel like, although characters in books and movies can be fictional characters, I think a lot of times they're actually inspired by actual people. Mm -hmm. So you think of any movie that you've ever seen... Like I, I think of right away like a like an underdog movie like Rocky that was mm -hmm. actually inspired by a real fighter. Sylvester Stallone went to watch a fight and he really he was really inspired by that fight. And because of that fight, he came up with this concoction of a story. And that's how he's he began his journey of writing Rocky. So it was actually inspired by real events, mm -hmm. although it doesn't mm -hmm. state that. So yeah. I think. Especially an artist, like everything connects to something. Like a lot of times people aren't just like creating this stuff from thin air. It's inspired by something and they add fictional parts to a story or they they fictionalize like the name. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. Yeah. And I also think that this song is very empowering, you know, not to not to always abide by tradition, not to always abide by rules and just 
this idea that like sometimes madness has to happen for things to change. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs>